Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and let me tell you what, there is more shady stuff going on right now than I've seen in a long time. There's a, uh, it's like they've ramped up their concerted effort, all the, all the anti-Ripple and anti-XRP people, they've ramped up the machine to try to scare as many people as possible, um, and you'll see it, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you all of it, but also, this FTX thing and all this. I've been in this since 2000, what is it, 13, 14, somewhere in that range. Let me tell you what I've seen. In all the scams, all, all the thefts, all the, the shady stuff, the, the disguised wells, all the, the, the shady shenanigans that, that appear to be almost like government operations and sh just total shenanigans going on. There's two things that I've never seen. There's two companies and two digital assets that I've never seen get dra drugged down with all of the, the shady stuff. That's Ripple and Stellar, XRP and XLM. And I've watched since 2013 or so, I've watched the same people, the same group of people that seem to be tied to almost every scam and shenanigan that's going on, whether it's Disguise Wells or Luna or anything else. Those same people, for since I got in this, are pointing at Ripple and calling it a scam. But every, at every turn, Ripple's being transparent. At every turn, Ripple's not attached to some shady thing that went down or some shady upper. At every turn, the same group of people that are pointing their finger over here are up to all kinds of shady stuff over here. It's been like that since 2013, and it's more like that today. But it seems like they they're they're pushing down the throttle as this law when this lawsuit when the final paperwork was filed. It seems like they're really increasing the th throttle now. Before I get going, I want to remind you that um, I'm excited about this. I ordered pre-ordered mine yesterday. They're supposed to be delivered in March. No more Ledger Nano S's and Nano X's. I'm getting one of these bad boys. They just came out with it. It's called the Ledger Stacks. Link in the top of the description. Uh, you can pre-order them um, right now. Check this out. If withdrawals continue at this rate, the COMEX will be empty of registered silver in less than 17 days. Probably nothing. COMEX registered silver vaults fall to under 33.2 million ounces. Lowest level since May 26, 2017, despite drop in, in registered vault totals. Rise to 299.9 million ounces. Open interest now equal to 206% of all vaulted silver. 1,863% of registered silver. Wow. Folks, it's going, look, it is going to, precious metals, gold and silver, it is going to be a part of the new system. They don't have any choice because all these countries are sick and tired of the U.S. abusing its status as the world reserve currency. And they're going to go in the direction of gold. They're already talking about it right here. Gold prices in Pakistan are now at record highs as people look to safeguard their wealth. As the country continues to deal with uncertainty surrounding its debt, this is the world's fifth most populous nation. All roads lead to gold. I agree. That's why Glint's my sponsor. The link's going to be in the top of the description. I buy physical gold and I buy gold in my Glint account so that I have my MasterCard debit card and I can spend the gold if I need to. All right, now here we go. Here's Jim Cramer. This is not the first time. This is the second time. I'm going to go to the middle because I don't want to listen to the whole thing. This is the second time in the last month, I think, that Jim Cramer has taken a shot at XRP. Now think about this. Before late 2017, CNBC was completely got XRP. They were showing you how to sell it. I'll show you that video. Part, I'll just show you the intro of that video in a second right before 2017. Then the Ethereum free pass began being worked on and CNBC all of a sudden went silent on XRP. These are not coincidences because then, I don't know who it was, but somebody got to them and said, oh, the narrative's Bitcoin and Ethereum now. 
from that time until now, their, or not until now, their narrative had been Bitcoin Ethereum. At some point, you'll notice in the last few months, once we exposed ETHgate and they caught wind that the SEC was about to have no choice but to possibly go after Ethereum and floated the idea that Ethereum 2.0 now makes it a security, that's when you saw CNBC stop talking about Ethereum. And now we got this lawsuit that has come is coming to a conclusion and all of a sudden Jim Cramer, Q Jim, Jim Cramer, and now he's trying to scare people away from XRP. This is the second time he's done it. We're going to call him out. at the same size. I, so I'm tired of the con. I thought you guys did a terrific job. And I love, but, but I, I love blockchain, but it has nothing to do with what happened. That's like saying, you know, like, I really love the fact that we put up cryptocurrencies. But there's nothing to love. Technology is good, but it, it, it's... I mean, if we think that the XRP uh, slash USD coin is something that we should be following, well, I mean, we should be following just, we should put up like Rent the Runway and Stitch Fix up there. I mean, I, you know, honestly, you know, let's put up those CEOs on I, too, I guess. I, I, well, coin, I, I think that one's different than a lot of the other coins, right but now. I think the marks that came with some of these things are enough to leave you scratching your head. Well, everything you said was true. I mean, at the end, I mean, I, I think that Kevin said that everything you said was true. I mean, the problem is everything everyone says is true about this, except for it's just a giant con. And remember, the con is not, uh, it, it, it's not blockchain. Blockchain is great. But we keep conflating blockchain with the con. And I don't know how that can continue. I mean, the, this thing, all these different prices, like we put up XRP and Solana and Dogecoin. Those are all, I believe, cons. Yeah. Okay. This is the man telling you that that's a con financial professionals and then there's the people who say they only make good calls and they're liars i i, I try really hard to make as many good calls as i can i think the, the difference is not good call bad call the okay. difference is real market and, and unreal market let me let me show you this is is uh you ran a hedge fund yes i did for many years all right you know a lot of times when i was short at my hedge fund and i was positioned short meaning i needed it down uh i would uh create a um a level of activity beforehand that could drive the futures. It doesn't take much money. What does that mean? Okay, uh, this... This is the man that called it a con. And this is his network in... Um, let me see if I put the date on here. It was late 2017, I think. But this is them teaching Bias. you how to You're buy. You're not, because they're very they call it the BK is here to tell us exactly how to do just that, BK. Yeah, sure. So Ripple has been on an absolute tear. And, and just to add to what Seema talked about, what Ripple really is going after is the SWIFT network or international payment transfer. So what you're talking about here and is... Then he goes on to show you trade how you can buy it on Poloniex, okay? Then um, I want to remind everybody that Jim Cramer told everybody he was buying Ethereum. He never called Ethereum a con. Well, here's the beginning of this video I had put together a while back. Um, legal scholars such as Preston Byrne, who, by the way, wrote the, the article the other day about Ripple, confirmed that Ether was created makes it cl a clear security. They've also shown that the creation of Ethereum may have been a criminal insider con job where a small group of whale, um, whale start, small group of whale, starting with the billionaires who created the scheme, pretended to make a market-based pre-sale of Ether, but they instead sold to themselves. Now, Jim Cramer's never called that a con, okay? But look who was behind it. It's remarkable that I've ever had the privilege of working on. It's a wonderful mix of both old and new. There are some senior software developers, people who work for Goldman Sachs off Wall Street. We have a person who can, can buy uh, from any number of different identities. We may limit the size, the, the unit size of a sale um, just to um, make it easier to disguise. Right. So for in Jim Cramer's world, this is not a con because his buddies are behind it. So it's not that's not a con, okay? But XRP is a con. Now here's Stuart Alderati regarding yesterday's Coindesk op-ed. Uh, let me, uh, regarding a, uh, Yesterday's Coindesk op-ed, I'm glad even the detractors recognize that the SEC's invitation to come in and register is like trying to take a model, a Ford Model T into space. 
But if you are going to try to debunk Ripple's legal positions, at least understand them first. As it clearly states in our brief, Ripple does not depend on a conclusion that XRP was purchased for use. Though such a conclusion, as shown by Amici, 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 Amici briefs, and non-speculative evidence would defeat the SEC's claims. Our actual arguments, A, there is no contract for investment between Ripple and any XRP holder. B, SEC cannot satisfy a single prong of the Howey test and Ripple concedes not a single prong. C, SEC's re reliance on garden variety ICO cases have no application here because there was no ICO. The reason the SEC and detractors try to recast our arguments is they have no answer for the arguments we actually make. Understand, folks, the Jim Cramers, they're the J.P. Morgan and the Goldman Sachs. Just imagine what it means. Now think about how much they have fought to, to put, to stop Ripple and stop XRP. And this guy, imagine what it means for them if XRP did prevail in this lawsuit. Imagine what it would mean for these people. So any kind of seeds they can plant out there in public, you got to believe they hope that that judge is watching CNBC. You know what I mean? These people are these people are not good people. Now, speaking of, this one caught me off guard yesterday. Listen to this. This is and I told the guys this is Jim Rickards. Remember, same same guy. Hold on a second. Thought I heard somebody coming in my door. This is Jim Rickards, the same guy that blocked me when I showed his Ice Nine video that was in his own words. I got to ask Rickards this because this is still preliminary research or ongoing research on FTX that we're doing. Is it possible, or have you thought about this being a CCP carve out? Uh, well, I wish I could rule that out, but you can't. It absolutely could be. Well, I've said from the beginning, by the way, who's, who's in, in Natoshi Sakamoto? Um, yeah. yeah. He, she, it, uh, team from Raytheon? I mean, we don't know. Yep. Yeah. So let's start there. But absolutely, if, I mean, the first thing that Revelation came out is like, why? Okay, FTX is a disaster. The war in Ukraine is a tragedy and a global economic disaster getting worse. How the heck does FTX get tied up in Ukraine? But they were. Yeah. I mean, that's that's been demonstrated. That's been been uh, been proven. So FTX, because he had this effect of altruism or whatever, um, we're going to give up, make a lot of money so we can give it away. I guess steal a lot of the money so they can give it away. But he created this fund to help Ukraine, and they gave them a lot of money. I don't know the exact amount, but it was well under the millions that they gave to Ukraine. But Ukraine took the money and bought the FTX token, mm -hmm. and then. What do you do with the FTX token? Well, you can launder it through FTX because they're not, you know, part of the, you know, um, DT. Uh oh. Then we've got this. Gary Gensler yesterday. I decided I would put a clip together because he was once again not telling the truth. He's talking about how um, she's asking him about that, saying, you know, Congress said that you guys were meet. Weren't you meeting with FTX? Listen to what, and I've spliced in um, some video from SBF himself. So many lawmakers are pointing fingers at the SEC over FTX's collapse. You have said numerous times, rules, security laws are in place and they apply to crypto. This is an issue of non-compliance. Why didn't the SEC enforce rules on the books? Could that have prevented FTX's collapse? We, we are enforcing them. For Americans who are trying to sort of trade in crypto, you know, get yields from crypto, whatever you know, it may be, can they use FTX? Offering the public, they say, they're purporting to offer them an interest return in crypto, 4, 8, 12, sometimes 15 or even 20% returns, and then possibly trading against their customers, trading ahead of their customers, lending that out. In September of 2021, when a large exchange, Coinbase, wanted to get into the crypto lending space, we said that would not be compliant with the laws the way they were set up. We brought actions against crypto lending platforms, including BlockFi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we do have a U.S. platform. It's FTX.US. Um, it has uh, you know, substantially fewer products than FTX.com has. It doesn't have any derivatives on it for instance, uh, but you can still trade crypto on it. You can still get yield on it. Right. So 
He was doing the same thing that Gary Gensler went after Coinbase for, went after Black Block BlockFi for, and then Block it, it killed BlockFi's value, and then FTX comes in to buy BlockFi. And the, this idea that um, <laughs> and look at this from Wheezy. People connected to Gary Gensler and FTX, Mark Wetgen, CFTC, Jill Summers, CFTC, Ron Miller, CFTC, Glenn Ellison, MIT, Sarah Fisher, Ellison, MIT, Lucas Moskowitz, SEC. One is a coincidence, but six? <laughs> exactly. And then there's then then there's this, okay? And I'm I say, look, when it comes time for Gary Gensler to be drug in front of this this, he's gonna say he can't talk. And it might be something like this, his reasoning for not being able to talk. I'm not participating. This is from the Madoff. This is an SEC official, I think, from the Madoff hearing. Listen to why she can't talk. I'm not participating in the current investigations due to the fact that a former employee married a member of the Madoff family and I attended the wedding. Folks, these people are so bad that, that it's not. It, I wouldn't put it past them to intentionally have some of these people marry and go to these weddings and some of these type things so that they could later raise their hand and say, well, I've got a conflict of interest. I can't. So that's how these people think. It's sick. We, our country has been poisoned. Patrick McHenry, I believe, is one of the good guys. And he's, he's talking about how he wants, uh, Chair Gensler wants to push digital asset ecosystems overseas to protect American investors. But right here he says, Congress stands ready to work with him on a bipartisan basis to achieve the, that goal. And the goal um, is that to develop a clear uh, framework. And then he says, reminder, FTX is a Bahamian-based company that fleeced customers around the globe and its U.S. investors right under Gary Gensler's nose. Well, Patrick, it's actually worse than that. These are the, these are the filings in the state of Delaware of FTX. It was FTX. I think they had multiple companies in the state that they had filed in the state of Delaware. I said, hey, Patrick, FTX, they actually had U.S.-based companies that were running right under Gary Gensler's nose, too. Why does Gary keep getting free passes? MF Global, when he was at the CFTC and now FTX, he must be next in line for president with all these failures. Then there's this. They all knew. This girl right here is apparently an attorney. I want you to listen to part of what she says. I'm attorney Anessa Allen Santos, and I specialize in representing blockchain and fintech companies, just like FTX. And I also do white collar defense, which would be for financial crimes like Sam Bakeman Freed should be facing. Here's what I want to tell you about this situation. They knew. Everybody knew. We all knew that this was a scam. I was not surprised. My colleagues were not surprised. My friends in the blockchain community, none of us were surprised. Let me explain to you why. FTX was absolutely registered here in the United States. It's registered in Delaware. There are several companies, affiliated companies that are registered. FTX is a licensed money transmitter. They had to register with the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network on the federal level, and for each of the 50 states in which it operated, not only did it have to register its company as a foreign company, because it's a Delaware company, so it's foreign to all of the other 49 states, but then it also had to apply for its money transmitter license. And when you do that, you have to submit this gigantic packet of papers. You have to implement a written anti-money laundering program. You so look, folks, they all knew. <laughs> and Library makes a really good comment. The thing that makes Gary Gensler an absolute psychopath is that he knows the forms required for a registered security, 10Q, cannot even be completed for public blockchains. It's little, literally impossible. Gensler knows this, and he takes advantage that the, me that the media doesn't. Or they do, and they just are uh, teeing him up. Now, a while back, ProCoin News did an article, um, by the way, ProCoin News, Dot com is the official sponsor of the Digital Asset Investor Hunting and Fishing Club. They did an article called Liberty Reserve, Jed McCaleb, Japan and Costa Rica. Fascinating article if you ever want to see it. And then I said, hey, ProCoin News, what are the chances? The um, Almeida CEO has, is, has retained Wilmer Hale. And they said, if true, there's a good chance she's represented by Preet Baharara. <laughs> I don't know how to say his name who happens to be the same U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York who prosecuted 
that Liberty Reserve thing that, that ProCoin News did the article on. What are the freaking chances? I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family that this country is sick, sick, sick. We, we're surrounded by lies. It is so disgusting.